Hello everybody and welcome to another Elevator Parts video. Today we're taking a look at Otis Series 1, but I've already done Otis Series 1. Well this button's a little bit different. This was a button I got quite a while ago, and it had one of the proprietary boards on the back. And the problem with those proprietary boards is they're not easily wired up. So what I did for this panel to wire it up was make my own circuit boards. I 3D printed these little bases, put some switches on, added a little resistor, and wired it all together. And it works for the most part. The problem that I have right now is obviously these buttons are clicky. Now there are clicky series one buttons, but it's not really the same. Another problem is I didn't design these right. So when you push down on the button, it kind of bends the circuit board back a little bit. So I think we can do a little bit better than that. Since I've wired this thing, I've acquired myself a little bin full of circuit boards. Now these are the non-proprietary version that we can use to hook up to these buttons. Now I've shown these to you on my video, but I'll show them to you again. They're pretty simple. There's this little spot here for a lamp socket. Got our little connector pin there, the four pins, a resistor, little diode, and then on the bottom we have the actual button. So in this video, we're going to go over again how to wire these buttons, but this time we're going to use more of a proper and more permanent method of wiring instead of taping wires on there and shoving lights in there. So this is gonna be a more updated wiring video on Otis Series 1. Let's go ahead and get started. So I went ahead and added a little lamp to this board, and here's the little LED. Now I want to be able to run this board off of a lower voltage. That's the first idea. I want to use my three volt battery pack that I already have on the back. And you see on the side, that these are higher voltage. These are actually 36 volts, at least this bulb is. So we're gonna do a little extraction of these bulbs and make our own lower voltage bulbs that we can put in here instead. So let's make our own bulb to use. So here we have our two little bulbs. Both of these bulbs fit into this little lamp socket for Otis Series 1. And we're gonna make our own bulbs out of this. And in order to do that, you need your higher voltage bulb, so in this case the 28 volt one, and you're also going to need another LED. In this case, this is a little bitty red LED. I want to make the other one green, so there's a green LED. So to get with this extraction, what you want to do is first take note at the pins at the very bottom. Now using a small pair of pliers, you can carefully kind of unwind these metal pins, just like that, straighten them out and then pull the old LED out. You'll notice that the LED that we extracted has a couple of little resistors on it, and this is what allows you to put the higher voltage through it. Hang on to the LED, because it could be useful in a later project. But what we are really after here is this little shell. Now you probably guessed it, we're gonna put our LED into this shell. Now your shell will most likely have some sort of positive or negative marking. You can see there's a plus on this side, and this one has a plus on this side. So you also want to install your LED in that sense. So locate your positive and negative end. Now your negative end is gonna be the flat side so you can put your LED in accordingly. Now this process can be quite annoying, but once you get it in there, you'll see it sits down in there just like that and your little pins are now sticking out of the bottom. And you just wanna bend those over. Now if yours is my case where the ends are too long, just cut a little bit of the end off and then finish clamping down the end. Now when you're finished, you'll have this little LED in here like that. Now that we've made our two small LEDs, it's time to get these put onto our circuit boards. So if you hold the board in this direction, so you have the resistor on the left, you wanna make sure the positive side is facing down. Positive end needs to be right here. Now that we've got our two little lights installed, it's time to get started with the wiring. Now in my previous video, I simply said to just tape some wires or solder them on here. And I don't really agree with that, but I also didn't have connectors at the time we have this. Now this is a big random cluster of wires, but the thing that's important to note here are these connectors. Now the two pins we're interested in are these two outer ones here. The very far left and the very far right. The very far left one is your positive, so that's where you'll put the positive of your battery. And the very far right one is the negative end of your battery. And that's how you're going to hook all of these together. You can see that my yellow wire is my positive and my red wire is my negative. And then we also have some convenient hookups for the battery right here. I'm just going to remove these two blue wires first. The next step is to take the old circuit boards off the button and install the new ones. That's pretty much all there is to it. And now we can see the button lights up again. And I think now it's actually a lot better than it was before. It presses more like a series one button 
with the proper contacts and it actually lights up brighter and better than it did before. So I hope you enjoyed this little video of wiring this Otis Series 1, well more fixing it up, but in the same way this would be how to wire a Series 1 properly, much better than my other project before. If you don't have the connectors or the bulbs, if you want to see more of a janky way to do it, check out my other video of wiring Otis Series 1. But other than that, hope you enjoyed it, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.